Hi folks, thanks again for joining me, very much appreciated. Today we've got a, um, this is Cuckoo's Nook, a local beauty spot, not far from where I live. I did it from a photograph uh, I took not too long ago. This is the, the photograph I was using, so got quite a lot of busy stuff going on with the trees and the twigs and the branches, so I have to try and work all that out. Lots of opportunity for reflections here in the water with all the, the bank side foliage and whatnot growing. The colours I've used ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, didn't use the alizarin, um, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red and as you always 99% of it done with a large egg brush just use a little bit of the flat brush just to pull some ripples on the water and then all the twigs and branches done with a number three rigger. This is my new book watercolour painting made simple volume four by myself, Stephen Cronin, um, should be available any day now on Amazon. Um, again, we got lots of step-by-step -step photographs to guide you through each paintings chapter. I think there's about eight paintings in there for you to have a go at. I've, I've tried to simplify it as, as best I could. So that's available on Amazon in the next two or three days, hopefully. Hardback, softback and Kindle. So I'm going to kick this one off by just giving a, a light soak of water over the whole paper. Um, benefits are twofold on this. First, most obvious one, it stops the paper from going all crinkly. Because it's only £130. Not, not the, it's not the greatest paper, but it's cheap. So I've, I've been using it for years now. Works out something like 30p a sheet, which is a lot cheaper than the stuff you can get in the shops. Um, and then the other benefit is with the water, it lets the colours blend together. Especially when you're doing the sky. <coughs> I'll generally do the sky first and it just lets all the colours blend nicely. Um, so I've kicked this one off with a bit of ultramarine. Then I've cleaned the brush, used a bit of lemon yellow. Then I've mixed the two colours together and I've started doing these uh, the tree reflections, starting off with the distant ones on the left hand side. There I've just introduced a little bit of light red into the mix, back into the lemon yellow, and I'm pulling down the reflections as I go along. That's why I, don't, I can't forget them. A bit of ultramarine, I'm trying to vary these trees as I'm going across. I've added a bit more lemon yellow there. If you want to get back to a cleaner colour, you'd have to clean the brush it up. Here I'm just going straight into colours. Um, and then pulling them down at the same time. If I don't do it at the same, well, a, it's, it's a lot easier to do it at the same time because you've already got the colour on the brush. It just it just seems like common sense. Um, if you do prefer to do it afterwards, then you have to try and mix exactly the same colour, which which, which can be slightly awkward. Um, so now I'm just going back along the banks, just trying to get a little bit of definition into the banks, adding a few dark tones here and there. I've also realised that the very right hand side should be a little bit closer to the foreground so I'm just trying to bring it down just slightly. So I think I've added a little bit of burnt umber to the mix just to continue with those sort of darker tones. A little bit of light red in there as well. And you see I'm trying to bring that right hand foreground just bang just slightly down just brushed a little bit of the colour into the water there, into the reflections at the same time. Also I want to get it a little bit darker, just so that when I scrape the rocks in, they just stand out a little bit better. If you try scraping into light toned colours, the rocks just aren't going to show up. So the paper's stretched a little bit now, so I'm just fixing it. I'll just use these little uh, bulldog clips, just to clip it to a piece of plywood that's leaning against my easel. Some people pre-stretch it and then use a bit of masking tape to tape it down to a board or something, but I just, you can obviously, it's, it's up to the individual. There's that many different ways of doing the same sort of things. It's entirely up to the individual, what suits. So now I want to stick in the, the some slightly narrower trunks. So I'll switch to the number three rigger and a dark mix of burnt umber, and ultramarine, flick up a few 
twigs and branches again remembering to do the reflections at the same time and I generally find that the quicker I flick them in the better they look like with all the paintings I've tried painting more slowly and deliberately but for me personally they never look as good I always prefer to just paint as fast and loose as I possibly can and generally find when I look at the finished painting there's always something that you could have done to have made it better but you always have to remember what that is and then just take that forward to the next painting and just constantly just keep improving bit by bit little by little so these they're just some little fence posts I've popped up there with a with a flat brush and then later I th I think I can only see one of them actually at the end of the painting. I'll just do like a little shadow off the one. So here I've just I've cleaned the brush and just put a bit of lemon yellow. I'm just trying to introduce a little bit of colour and a little bit of lighter tones in amongst the, the darker tone just to get a little bit of contrast in there. And again just popping in those water reflections at the same time as I'm going along. I'm just trying to make this water look as interesting as I possibly can. And then I've added a bit more burnt umber, ultramarine, just for, again, just darkening it. And then I've cleaned the brush back to the lemon yellow. And that was just a little bit of a bit of land in that top left, just below where I put those fence posts in. A little bit of land that you can see behind the trees. Just dragging some of this colour into the water, getting those reflections in there. And it's generally it's about adding layer upon layer and layer. Of washes and colours. Generally, the more the more layers you can get in, the better I find. So now it's time. I've done the background trees and bushes. Now I'm switching to the the closer, the closer one. So I've switched to the rigger brush, and I'm using a, a dark mix of burnt umber and ultramarine, and pressing down just slightly heavier this time just to get that slightly broader stroke for these trees that are a little bit closer towards us. So broader stroke for the main trunk and then just a lighter stroke just for all the twigs and the branches just to get a finer line with the brush. Quite a versatile little brush, comes in very very handy. So I'm just constantly reloading, plenty of paint, plenty of water, popping the tree in and then doing the reflection at the same time. There's a big one now going in and then doing the reflection, just following the same sort of shape and direction. The reflections, they don't have to be absolutely perfect, as long as they're there or thereabouts, you'll be okay and they'll, they'll make your water look a lot more um, a lot more realistic so pushing I'm, I'm deliberately now pushing some of those twigs into the the lighter area of the sky just to maximize the contrast so that they stand out a lot better give a lot more impact and you can see those reflections down below now they're starting to make the water look look um, a bit more authentic Just filling in the gaps now with a few more trees and branches and whatnot. So we've got another big tree there. So I'll press down a little bit heavier with the stroke. So at some point I'm going to want to darken those banks again and start scraping these rocks in. So I'm just finishing off these trees. Loads of little flicks and things here, there, everywhere. A lot of the detail happens by just by chance. 
I'm not always fully conscious of what I'm doing. I'm just sort of whizzing around with the brush, just trying to be as loose as I possibly can. So back to the egg brush, and this is a bit of a bit of light red. I think such a burnt umber in there as well, possibly adding a few darker tones along the banks. Obviously, just getting a lot narrower and narrower as it goes off into the distance. And then just a bit of ultramarine, burnt umber. Let's get those darks in. Nice bits of sort of shadowy undergrowth beneath the trees. So, whenever I paint the rocks in and start scraping, I always want to make sure that the paper is flat against the, the plywood. Because otherwise, it, it, it just, it, you just can't really do it. If the paper's sort of slightly proud, then it makes it awkward. So it needs to be flat. So here, just scraping a few little rocks. Well, I'm trying not to overdo it as I go along. So they're the first ones. Now I'm just pulling down little reflections of those rocks that I've just put in. And all these little reflections, every little reflection just helps make that water just a little bit more authentic back to the rigger brush I'm just flicking up just little reeds and grasses just by the water's edge just painting over just one or two of those rocks just to try and blend them in a little bit better So now I just want to use the, 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 the dry flat brush now to try and create some sort of ripples and on the on the, the surface. So I'm just very very lightly just brushing the surface, keeping it horizontal, and that's important because you don't want these ripples sloping one way or the other. So broad horizontal strokes so it just just very ever so lightly disturbs the paint and creates that sort of ripple effect always looks uh, best when you're sort of cutting through reflections if you're through the darks just so that it stands out just a little bit better but very important not to overdo it just as as with most things just keep it subtle so here now I'm sort of I'm dry brushing a little bit of lemon yellow with the height brush to just give the impression of a little bit of foliage amongst the leaves. Popping a little bit of that into the, the banks as well. Just again, just trying to break up a few of the darks. Always looking for the, the contrasts. So you can see if we look at the water now I've got pretty much all the colours above are reflected down below. So time to move on. So I've reloaded the brush, ultramarine, burnt umber and I'm starting work now on this left hand foreground, just this little bank that will just create this extra layer and that extra layer will create that extra bit of depth to the scene the more layers you can get in the better so quite a heavy downstroke with the rigger brush to create that broad thick trunk and then just a lighter touch for the twigs and the branches just to create those narrower lines another big trunk there to the right and as I as I sort of stray off the trunk, I'm flicking around everywhere, just suggesting twigs, branches, grasses down below. All these little details, as I say, a lot of it just by chance. I'm not consciously looking to place a particular branch in a specific area. I'm just sort of whizzing around, trying to do it as loose, loose as I can. The looser I find, the better. I can't do deliberate, slow, methodical paintings. 
just doesn't work for me. So there's another, there's a third one gone in, and then you've got a few offshoots as we get up there. Also, this little flicks, they leave little dots and dabs of paint everywhere. And they themselves suggest little bit little leaves scattered about. So I'm just filling in that left hand space there with various widths of, of trunks and branches and twigs and whatnot, a few flicks of the grass and reeds down below. Pushing some of those out into the, the lit area, that sort of the lighter part of the water, just to maximise the contrast. So now I've switched back to the height brush. Bit of red on there, bit of burnt umber. Now I'm just doing a sort of loose profile now of that, that, that left hand bank. I don't want to encroach too much on the water because I don't want to cover up those reflections that I've done. Especially that little, you can see just to the right of the, that left hand bank there, is that little bit of ultramarine reflecting the colour of the sky. So I've stopped short of that. So just popping in a few lights first. Starting off with the lights. And then working just slowly through to the dark, darker tones which will uh, provide the contrast and the uh, few foreground shadows. But for now, I just want to pop a few grasses in, so I'm sort of alternating between flicks of the rigger brush and use, just using a fingernail. You can see, just pushing those grasses deliberately into that lit area. Lit area of the water. Always from trying, I'm always looking for ways of maximising the contrast. Exploit every opportunity you can. Bit of lemon yellow, um, ultramarine, to pop a bit of foliage on these near side trees. A bit more down in the in the at the base of the trees as well in the undergrowth. And the painting, you can see that it's, it's starting to take shape now. Most of the elements are in, just needing a few finishing touches here and there. So a few darker, darker bits of foliage. And then I want a few of those darks underneath as well. Just to act as little shadows here and there. And then just a, a few flicks of the height brush to suggest a few more little grasses and things growing by the, 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 the banks of the water. So I'm just popping in a little shadow there on that fence post and a few flicks here and there with the rigger brush. few more over on the left, few over on the, the right hand bank. But at this point I don't want to, uh, just looking for very very subtle bits now. I think I've, I've got enough rigor work I think throughout the painting, just very very subtle now, just to finish it off. And I'm thinking at this stage, this, this painting's pretty much finished now I think. I think all I need now is just to pop a little signature down in the corner. And the painting's complete. So here's the finished painting. So if we compare it to the photograph that we was using kept all the elements fairly similar, might have moved just one or two trees around slightly, just, just to suit. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same, very same sort of composition. So I started all these faint distant um, trees and bushes in the background, very, very soft, put on when the paper was still wet, weaker tones. And then as we come closer and closer into the, the, the middle and foreground, see the stronger tones 
contrast nicely against the, the ones in the weaker background just to create that sense of depth and distance. Scraped a few rocks there along the river bank to uh, just to distinguish the land from the um, water. Also did a, the odd reflection here as well, here and there. And you can see how I've reflected everything. I did it at the same time while the colour was still on the brush to make it easier. You got the colour, a little bit of red there, a little bit of red in the water again with the, the yellows and the greens, just reflecting everything down at the same time. Especially the trunks, obviously the trunks are the biggest features you can see reflected in the water below. And then just ran across it lightly with a brush just to try and create that sort of ripple effect on the on the surface of the water. We've got another layer here over on the left hand side, trying to get a bit of variation in the colour. Lots of rigor work, suggesting all the reeds and grasses and whatnot, and then we've got some more trunks going right up. And then just dabbed a few leaves and foliage on there with the rig with the um hate brush. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Keep practicing, and I'll see you again soon.